The Realme Nazo 20 is extremely similar to the Realme C15 and the C12 in terms of design and features, but we do see some segmentation in terms of the specifications. This model is priced starting 500 rupees lower than the Realme C15, but it features a superior processor. So are there any other trade-offs and who should buy each of these models? Is Realme also making things too confusing in the market right now? I'm going to attempt to answer all these questions in my review of the Realme Nazo 20. But before we go ahead, please do remember to subscribe to the Gadgets360 channel and hit the bell icon so you know whenever we publish a new video. Realme is now well known for recycling designs across models, so it should be no surprise that the Nazo 20 looks and feels almost exactly the same as its C-series cousins. Considering that this is a relatively thick, chunky phone, it isn't too hard to hold on to, but you will feel its weight if you're used to having long conversations. On the front, you have a 6.5-inch HD Plus screen with rounded corners and relatively thick borders all around, especially the chin. The screen wasn't always bright enough to see clearly under direct sunlight, and I did notice that automatic adjustment sometimes didn't kick in when needed. The screen resolution is a bit low and colors aren't the most vivid, but everything still looked crisp enough and content was enjoyable. The speaker is just about okay as well. It's fine for game effects, but not for serious music listening. Widevine DRM certification is L3 only, so full HD video streaming isn't possible. Realme has done a good job with design overall. The phone doesn't necessarily feel very premium, but the build quality is solid. My review unit came with Android 10 as expected and the August 2020 security patch. The Realme UI skin is quite unobtrusive and not too different from stock Android while still offering plenty of useful touches such as a split screen mode, game optimizer, app cloning, kids mode, private storage, smart sidebar and gestures. There is some preloaded bloatware including multiple Realme apps, Amazon, Facebook and WPS Office. The theme store and browser served some annoying notifications but the rest were well behaved. Thankfully, the Realme Nazo 20 proved to be much smoother to use in day-to-day -day situations than the Realme C12 or the C15, no doubt thanks to the bump in processor power. Responsiveness wasn't always instantaneous, but the UI was pleasantly fluid and I didn't feel any stuttering. I was able to flip between apps quite easily. Gaming is supposed to be the main strength of MediaTek's Helio G series processors, so we tried a few popular titles. Asphalt 9 Legends was smooth for the most part, but the game did freeze momentarily when performing flips and crashing. Dead Trigger 2 ran with no trouble whatsoever. The upper rear of the Nazo 20 did get mildly warm while playing heavy games. The 6000 mAh battery definitely lives up to its potential. I was able to use the Nazo 20 for nearly two days before it needed to be plugged in, and that time included streaming a full-length movie, taking lots of photos and videos, streaming assorted media, and playing some games. Our HD video loop test ran for a whopping 29 hours and 6 minutes. Charging is relatively quick considering the capacity there is to fill. The primary 48 megapixel camera serves its purpose, delivering reasonable photo quality. Colors are quite good most of the time, but detail is a bit rough and exposures aren't always forgiving. For example, detail in the sky was lost in frames with buildings in the foreground. Detail isn't great when looking at photos magnified to their actual size. At the full 48 megapixel resolution, you can get quite detailed shots, but don't expect great results from cropping sections of huge photos. Natural depth of field is, however, quite good, and the Nazo 20 is quick to lock focus. There's a portrait mode that detects edges quickly enough, but you can't adjust the effect before or after taking a shot. As expected, the ultra-wide camera lets you play with composition, but quality is much poorer, and there's severe distortion in photos. At night, the Nazo 20 does okay. Shots looked washed out and contrast was poor, besides the obvious issues of noise and low detail. There is a night mode that actually makes a considerable difference. Bright areas don't get overblown and greys regain their colour, but that doesn't mean that shots are clearly better all the time. You do lose detail and might end up with blotchier results sometimes. The wide-angle camera is of limited use outdoors in the dark. Night mode does work here and makes photos brighter, but don't expect good detail. The low-resolution macro camera might entertain you, but shots are rather poor in terms of sharpness, detail, and color reproduction. This is not likely to be useful for capturing precious memories. The 8-megapixel front camera does a decent enough job in the daytime, but isn't very effective at night. Beautification is on by default, which I'm never a fan of. 
There's also a portrait mode which detected my face accurately but made the background look rather artificial. Video recorded at 1080p, whether in the daytime or at night, is shaky and detail isn't great. You can use the wide-angle camera as well, but you can't switch between the two while recording video. Realme has created even more confusion in its product lineup with the release of the Nazo 20, which seems to handily outclass the Realme C15. Although the C15 starts at a lower price, the Nazo 20 is actually less expensive when you look at variants with comparable specifications. The Nazo 20 has a far better processor and as a result, overall performance is clearly superior. The Nazo 20 is therefore much easier to recommend than its cousins and is also a stronger offering in its segment. Price starting at just over 10,000 rupees, this is a decent phone with great battery life and good enough performance for occasional gaming. So that was our review of the Realme Nazo 20. Thanks for watching and as always, for all things tech, do visit us at gadgets360.com.